Right. I have staggered this episode deliberately because uh, I don't. I, I'm trying not to create ridiculously long episodes. I think some of my episodes have been ridiculously long, so I'm trying to spread it out a little bit. Um, this might be a couple of days after the release of the headlining video. For me, it was about 10 minutes ago. We're now going to press on with the next job, which is installing this brilliant battery, US 5000. Um, and then we're going to test some of the electrics, namely the washer pipe to see what goes on there. Now I can see all the piping. Uh, we might need to blow out. I'm going to trace because it'll say it starts here and it goes all the way over here into the car and we're going to see what's going on we can hear the motor but the piping may need a blow through but anyway we're going to install, install the battery um which is as i say it's all on green and as i say my focus the battery in the focus has never ever been that great it's like 12 12.1 12.2 volts is where it hovers over even after a long drive whereas this is 12.6 that's exactly what a, a 12 volt battery should be when it's healthy um, but you know, it's, it's never, it's never let me down, but it's, it's weird. Um, yep. So we're going to pop this on. We're going to test the washer, the clock to see whether that works because apparently the bulb had blown behind. Yeah, the bulb. So, uh, it could be as simple as that. It may not be. And we're going to test my aftermarket radio, the radio I once had in the focus. One important thing to note on these batteries, it says you must remove the transit plugs. So, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, pry it out with my fingers, I think, and just pull them both out. And we've connected the battery and it's all good and it fits perfectly. So these are designed to go in this tray. They're not designed for 073 batteries, so uh, 075 batteries. So 5063 batteries are um, perfect. Right, so we'll start testing once I've got these two out. Now, with that Kenwood unit, to use the steering wheel controls, you needed this. I have kept this uh, new Robo Freelander Auto Lead. And it's adapter, basically it goes, uh, if I can find the plug, that's the radio plug. I believe that that's the volume control plug. That is gonna be unused. We are not gonna bother with these. I never did in my focus, to be honest with you, until I fitted the original radio. Original radios, headsets for these, by the way, were pretty rubbish. And um, most people say they've replaced them with aftermarket ones because they are, the original ones are just rubbish. They're nowhere near as good as the old Rover stuff. Um, so basically we're gonna use these leads. Uh, we've got a couple of wires down here. I'm gonna have to find out which wire the clock goes to. Now I've completely forgotten. Um, Oh, it's this one, isn't it? It's the, top, it's the top one here, so we'll check out the clock first. Yeah, so basically the problem was just this bulb at the back. It had blown. The original one had just completely blown. Now, I have cleaned this out, but we're just going to test and see. I know that people are saying, oh, you've connected the battery up. Don't mess with the electrics. I know, I know. To be honest with you, I'm only going to test a couple of things. Right. go away and it looks like we have absolutely nothing on the screen nothing no life whatsoever with this thing oh dear i might have to do a voltage test but i think we can confirm that it is absolutely kaput basically so that is one thing that i'm gonna have to replace there's literally no life. I'm just going to check the fuse. Right. Right. After much um, faffing around with the clock, I can confirm using a multimeter uh, and a continuity tester between these four points that this is a complete dud. So we are going to have to get another clock. It's not essential, but I'd like everything to be working. And that screws into the back of the center console. So I kind of want it up and running. So I'll add that to the list with a hazard warning switch. I can confirm that the clock uses the same 15 amp fuse um, as the radio. And the radio I have here, it's, I think you might have seen these on eBay and Amazon quite a lot. They are really cool, funky, retro um, 
radios they're bluetooth radios it's only fm so no medium wave long wave and dab um, but that's all i need it for at this moment in time to be honest now the only thing that it doesn't have facilities for is the stereo remote control the um the uh, steering wheel remote control so all that i'm going to keep for the future just in case so this uh steering wheel control connector is just going to be sitting there unplugged but i don't really care about these bluetooth is a must for me in a car that i'm going to use hopefully a bit more regularly and i'm not being funny this looks will look far better in keeping with the dashboard and the type of car that this is because it is quite a retro car with cream dials and walnut and a retro radio that would look good in a p6 and that's why this is why i bought this for the p6 but then i had a change of heart because the original radio mobile started working uh and i was like well it's working now i've must have done something right so i uh i put this on the shelf um but we are we have got the correct plugs and it was all working and all this all the speakers are working um i can actually show you i'll just put the ignition on come on which yep done it is on there we go and as we can confirm everything works including the rear speakers so I'm happy with that. We'll shut. We don't want the Bluetooth on. I'll just shut it down. Okay. So that's all good. The clock is defunct, as I say. I have checked the wiring just in case. Uh, the wiring is. Where is the wiring? Oh, it's here for the plug. Now, I'm gonna. I'll show you a few things. The black wire goes from. It obviously, goes to the earth. The blue and yellow wire is the main power now if i just look at the, the diagram here this is the clock we've got four points so we've got the earth we've got the white and blue u stands for blue in wiring and that goes from another fuse now i i can't understand why it would go through the driver's window fuse that's what this is telling me and this is 2003 by the way this wiring diagram uh, but i'm not going to pay too much attention because there's power coming through there there's also power coming through the main clock and um, radio fuse, the yellow and red. And the lighting feed, which is the red and black one. Uh, yeah, ooh, don't do that, Andrew. Just lean it there. Um, yeah, and that I've got power. I've got continuity there. I've tested it against um, another earth just in case. And it's absolutely fine. It all works out. So it is the clock, unfortunately. So I'm going to take this bulb out because that's my bulb. Um, I'm probably going to keep it just for the outer casing, you never know, um, but I'm going to get another one and I suspect that they're going to be expensive because they're a common item for going wrong and everybody wants one if they're doing up a Rover 45. So we've confirmed all that, I'm happy with all that. Um, there is another thing I'm just going to test in a second. Right, well, as usual, unfortunately... Absolutely nothing for the intermittent wipers. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting. I've now removed the plug, one of the wires of which controls the intermittent wiper um, motor, but I don't know which wire it is because it doesn't correspond with what's in the manual. Now, according to the manual, there is a wire that goes from the Petron unit all the way directly to the motor, this wire here. All the other, uh, um, all the other um, switches are basically through, uh, I think, number 69, which is the, no, it's, that's the washer pump, number 71. Oh, it's the, it's, it's the switch. This is the actual wash wipe switch. So everything else goes through that, but the intermittent goes through the Petron relay, as we now know. But it says UW, which is blue-white. There's no blue white wire in here that I can see. Unless it's green and white. There's a blue and there's a blue and green. I might test that. But I'll show you this now. Now look what comes on the dashboard. Just shut up. Now that was what was happening before with the hazard lights. Now that's disconnected. The hazard lights are on. 
Now that's fascinating, and that's obviously part of the same circuit. Because why would it be doing that? But, as I say, if I could just confirm, no clicking. So that is definitely the plug. But it's interesting, now the hazards are now permanently on. But if I put that plug back in and put the ignition back on, they won't be doing that. Now, that is quite interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on that, but I need to work out which wire to test. Ideally, I just want to test the wiper side of things. But I've got to get the scuttle off again. Oh, God. Right, I have been having a little um, talk on the forums with a couple of people. And the first thing they said is, have you checked the relays in the petrol unit? I said, yep, yeah, I have. They're all working. And when I put it on intermittent, it clicks. And that's what it's supposed to do. So it is sending power to the motor. Now, the only other thing it could be a break in the wire between here and the motor, but that is incredibly unlikely, I've been told. It is most likely a bad motor. There's a bad connection in the motor. They are common for going wrong. Now, the truth is I could take that motor out again and get the casing off like I meant to. I meant to get the casing off. It could be full of water, but I doubt it. I think I'd have seen some evidence of um, water spilling out because it was in my flat for a good few days. Uh, and I had the dehumidifier on in my flat, actually. So uh, it, it wasn't just sucking water out of the carpets. It was sucking water out of pretty much everything. They're absolutely amazing things. Um, I personally think I'm going to make do without that in that um intermittent wiper switch to be honest with you my as i said before my mot tester as long as he sees that the wipers work he'll give me a pass for that it's not a problem um but it's a bit annoying um but i kind of i've, I've ruled it down a little bit I, I, that is the important thing i've ruled it down um so essentially the motor work i've said the motor works on the normal and the fast speed and that's an indicator that the motor should be okay. Um, but they, the contacts can sometimes go a bit funny. So I'm kind of aware of that. I don't want to be taking the scutter off all over again. So I am literally just going to bolt the wiper arms with the new blades on that car. And just accept that I haven't got intermittent wipers. We're going to come to that on another day. Because there's just so many things I need to get done. Um, it is just uh at the moment it's just priorities so we've sorted that out now well we've we've come to a conclusion now and the, the most important thing is there's nothing wrong with this in fact i'm just going to plug that back in okay and uh, this should go out so just going to try again go on go all right oh sorry i didn't mean to do that so, normal, yeah, fast, yeah, yeah, I mean, someone said that it could be the fact that it's just not getting the signal to be intermittent, uh, the only way I can check that is by the wiring in there. Um, but to be honest with you, I can't be bothered to take it off again. I have slightly damaged the paintwork on the edge of that bonnet by taking off the scuttle. It is a tricky thing to do. I, I don't want to be doing that again. Um, I can always come to it at a later date. So I know that this is good. And this is the most important thing, this module. Uh, it's quite rare to not have it faulty. So touch wood, it remains like that. But now, let's go to the next issue. The next issue is the rear washer. So we're going to, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to follow the lead and we're just going to pop our camera right there and check it out. Three, two, one. Oh, I did see something there. There seems to be a bit of a blockage. Oh, come on. Move. Uh, there's a bit of a blockage, but uh, there is water in there, and I can see that it's operating. So I'm just going to turn that switch. Turn off. Yeah, it's off now. Yes, thank you very much. 
Right, we can see there might be a bit of a blockage in here. And it looks like someone has actually snapped the blasted end of a, uh, the um, uh, the actual hose itself from the... Oh, God. So I've got to get that out. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go for an airline and blow the blasted thing out. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off from this junction because I think this is absolutely fine. And then blow through into there and see if it dislodges any of this. Right, I've just taken off the connection, just put that in the bowl so it catches it. So now we're just going to bung this airline straight on uh, as best as we possibly can and we'll see if water comes out of that. Well, I'm currently blasting it through, but it's absolutely... Whoa! Bloody hell! It's actually come off the line! But this is literally blocked up as far as you can get. Honest to God, I mean, oh my God, that is blocked. I'm just pulsing it at the moment. That is, I'm literally just pulsing it. It is pushing the crap out, but oh my God, I'm going to have to move the camera so you can see what is going on. Now, this is the full force of my air compressor. I'll tell you, you can hear it. Look at it. It's absolutely gone. Ow! But, excuse me, I'm not going to swear. Uh, it's come off again. But you can see the problem I'm facing, so I'm just going to continue trying to uh, push it out. Come on. Go on. It's running now. You can see it's actually trying to get past. I think gravity is pushing it towards my air compressor. Um, I have got almost a glass full of screen wash, which is good, but it seems that this has been bunged up over the years. Right, I couldn't see before, I've just taken it out of the gaffer tape, but it's actually, there's a small connection here, and I do have this, but I've got, I've got a whole uh, load of lime with my new one. What someone's done is they've simply, I reckon, Sorry about the air compressor. It's got blocked up. They thought, why is my washer's not working? I'll have a look. And they've literally pulled it from the top of the car and they've just snapped the end off it because that's the end that goes in there. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this section off and swap this bit over. But I'm just going to blow through this section here. It's coming free. Whatever's in there is being pushed out. And what I suggest you do... That is quite tight, so what I do is get a pick and just go inside with a pick and just literally get in and break that seam and then pull it off because you don't want that snapping, which is I suspect what's happened. It's just got stuck uh, exactly like the end. And you literally can just, there we go. Look at that, completely blocked by whatever is in there. That's coming straight out. I suspect whatever's lodged in there, I don't think you can quite see. That can't help either. I don't know what's got into this washer system, but it's not meant to be there. Right, here we go. We've got the glass. It should, should now come free. And it really... <laughs> I didn't expect that to come through. Yeah. Yeah. It's filling my pint glass. Oh, yes. Careful. If I got served that at a pub, I think I'd walk out. There you go. That is how you blow out the lines. It always gets messy. Look at what has come out. That wasn't in my glass before. I drink out of this glass. Yep, that is definitely something that shouldn't be there. That pipe is now clear. So we can just fit uh, this short section and bolt it up onto the roof. Right, I can now take that piece of gaffer tape off. Obviously someone's had a go at doing this before, previously. Some five minutes later, 
that took a while to push into place. I'm not going to push it that way. You basically put it down and you push it in because you've got two tabs that basically just slide into the body. That's now nice and firm. I had to use my soft malleted hammer just to give it some gentle persuasion while putting downward pressure on it to hit it sideways this way just to get it to click in. And now that's in. That's fantastic. We can get rid of that gaffer tape. It's nicely cleaned up. I've cleaned off the excess gaffer tape and then we just connect it up. Fantastic. And now we all need to do is just connect it up so just push down and just give it a bit of persuasion to get it on and it will go on right that's fantastic so that's all done I'm going to come to the conclusion with the wiper that we just run the car. Sorry, my hand in the way. Uh, that we just run the car uh, and just see if that intermittent wiper actually starts working. If not, I'll look at that at a future date. At the moment, there's too many things going on, and I know it would pass an MOT on that. It's not a problem. Um, so the clock needs replacing. The washers have been done and are leak free. The radio works. Obviously, we lose the steering wheel controls, but it's a nice radio, uh, and I can use the Bluetooth on it, so perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, so a couple of switches to get, and just be mindful. So I will see you very soon. Um, oh, there is actually one more test I can do, and I'll, I'll show you this now. Well, I've got the ignition on. Now, starter inhibitor should not start in gear, so we're in park, reverse. nothing so reverse Ooh, drive so it shouldn't start in drive either yeah absolutely fine but neutral yeah absolutely fine that's just the last test today take care guys see you very soon